Hello and welcome to Inside Out Northwest. This week we're in Birkenhead, famous for its shipbuilding, but less well known as home to iconic World War I poet Wilfred Owen. More on that later. And the powerful verse of Wilfred Owen changed war poetry forever. We discover how he spent seven years of his tragically short life in Birkenhead. You know, Birkenhead is a tough, like, like dynamic place, and his words were tough and dynamic. Not many people realise that our greatest war poet, Wilfred Owen, grew up in Birkenhead. Little's known about his time here. But now an old letter has been discovered which sheds new light on those years the Owen family spent on the Wirral. And as JC Normand reports, it's thrown up a few surprises as well. Gas. Gas. Quick boys. An ecstasy of fumbling, fitting the clumsy helmets on just in time. But someone still was yelling out and stumbling and floundering like a man in fire or lime. Dim through the misty panes and thick green light, as under a green sea, I saw him drowning. The words of Wilfred Owen, whose powerful verse changed war poetry and our perception of war forever. He writes about things that are hugely evocative, hugely angry, hugely this is not how things should be. All the great critics say that um, Owen would have been the next poet after Keats. He was the greatest English poet in waiting. It's not widely known that Owen grew up in Birkenhead, but the seven years he lived there are the longest period he spent anywhere in his tragically short life. There's a memorial stained glass window to him in the library but the town's role in Owen's story remains largely neglected. Birkenhead doesn't um, shout about its heritage or culture very, very loudly, and uh, more genteel places like Shropshire, where he was born, you know, it, it fits in nicer there, it, it, it's more, it's more rose-tinted. Like Owen, musician Dean Johnson was a pupil at Birkenhead Institute. Now he's on a mission to have his hometown's part in Wilfred's life fully acknowledged. He's written a musical about the poet and has also opened a museum in the town centre, which he hopes will help redress the balance. You know, Birkenhead is a tough, like, like dynamic place, and his words were tough and dynamic. In 1900, when the, Owen, when the Owens arrived, you know, he must have just sent their heads reeling. The Owen family had fallen on hard times and were transported from rural Shropshire to one of the busiest industrial towns in the country. Wilfred's mother, Susan Owen, has consistently been portrayed as deeply unhappy in Birkenhead and described by biographers as a bit of a snob who turned her nose up at her new neighbours. This is the house in Elm Grove where the Owen family first lived when they moved to Birkenhead. Academics have described their time here as being unhappy, but new evidence has emerged which paints a very different picture. This is Mal Robinson, who grew up in Birkenhead and now lives in London. He was shocked to discover that his family had a connection with Wilfred Owen. This is the letter that Susan Owen sent to my grandmother on my grandmother's 21st birthday. And in it, she actually mentions the fact that she'd weaned my grandmother. My dear Susie, fancy your 21st birthday last month. It seems longer ago to me than that, for we have moved about so much longer ago. Yet I well remember your dear mother and the Sunday. It was Easter Sunday, I think, that I carried you away to my home to wean you when you were a few days or a week old. I also remember the nights that you kept me awake, but it was a work of love, so I did not mind that. Having been born in Birkenhead and brought up in Birkenhead, it's nice to read something like this, which actually indicates that the Owens had rather a good time in Birkenhead, which seems to fly in the face of a lot of rumour and things that you read about Susan Owen. And to be honest, Susan Owen did a lot for my grandmother, and that, that gives an impression of a woman who cares. 
The little girl on the right of this picture is Mal's grandmother. Her mother was clearly a woman in need, and it was Susan Owen who helped her. However, Mal had another surprise. My grandmother's mother was called Magdalene, and she was of German descent, and her maiden name was Schmidt. German families were quite common on Merseyside at the turn of the century, and as war approached, many of them were forced to leave or change their names as tensions mounted. But it still seems extraordinary that our great war poets grew up with German friends. This revelation that they were actually a German family, um, when, you, when, you, when you just oppose that to Owen's war poetry, you know, it's, dev it's devastating, I think. It was great. I just wanted to, you know, uh, to phone the, the, the original biographers of all those books and go, na 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 na. How significant is this letter in terms of what it says about the time the family spent here? It overturns a, a hundred years of, of myth making of their time in Birkenhead. And it also validates uh, Owen's time here and, and the influence that, that shaped the greatest war poet of all time. Geoffrey Walsh is another son of Birkenhead and a Wilfred Owen expert. For him, the letter confirms Susan Owen's role in the Wilfred Owen story. Extraordinary. Mm. And what it does show, I think, is um, a very caring, loving family with a mother. Um, I think she was a remarkable woman. They always say that writers always have a strong mother. And I think that she was, if you like, the, perhaps the main person who influenced Owen and developed his art. It seems certain that the two women became friends through their shared faith, practised at Christchurch in Birkenhead. As far as I'm aware, Susan Owen taught my nan's brother at Sunday school there, and she also taught Wilfred Owen a son. So we think that Christchurch being the kind of community hub, that's how they got to know each other. This church is central to the story, and it was here that Dean premiered his Wilfred Owen musical, Bullets and Daffodils. Wilfred's father was a lay preacher here, and Wilfred later graduated to being a choir boy. The organ is the, is the very organ which Wilfred heard and sang along to. Bullets and daffodils for every young man Blood stained against the yellow hill. Poppies and monuments for a generation lost. The wind of war is never still. It's never, never still. The musical has now been staged twice in the West End. The man who played James Herriot in All Creatures Great and Small, first starring and then directing. I think it's beautiful. And it comes from Dean's passion for Owen and Birkenhead and et, et al. Researching Wilfred's story, it taught me about, it taught me about my hometown and telling Owen's story taught me about the First World War because his story is the story of the war. And I'm sure we'll be hearing more of Wilfred Owen's extraordinary poetry during next year's centenary of World War I. Now, don't forget, you can catch us again on the BBC iPlayer, but we're back next Monday. So until then, goodbye. Next week, remembering the Summerland tragedy on the Isle of Man. Coming towards me then was a wall of flame. Literally a wall of flame.